Good afternoon everybody, it's Simon here from careermap.co.uk and welcome to National Work Experience Week. Uh, this is the last session for today's events and we're joined by the team from IGD. Uh, they're going to be talking to you about the fast-paced and exciting world of careers in the food and grocery industry. Uh, but before we begin, I'd just like to say there's a chat facility on the right hand side of the screen. Uh, throughout the presentation, if you've got any questions at any time, put them in there and we'll run through as many as we can uh, during the Q&A session at the end. Uh, so without further ado, I will pass you over to the IGD team to uh, begin the presentation. Hello everyone, thank you so much Simon. Uh, my name is Jess and welcome to the IGD workshop. We're really pleased to have you joining us today to find out all about the opportunities at our IGD Work Experience Week in May and to find out about the varied and interesting jobs within the food and grocery industry. That's what IGD stands for if you didn't know already. Um, so I can already see that people are saying hello in the chat box which is brilliant because we do want you to interact uh, throughout. So if you're joining from home or school, if you're a teacher in the classroom maybe, Tell us how many people are there watching. Um, and I'm just going to do a very quick shout out as well. So um, I'm going to say hello to Sol, Naomi, Dan, Laura, Phil saying hi, everyone. Sarah's put a lovely message. I'm really looking forward to this webinar as it's going to be really useful to have an up to date picture of the food industry. So that's brilliant. So throughout the session, if you have any comments or any questions, please do pop those into the chat box there and I will do my best to read them out, but there are a lot of you. Um, so I'm really excited to tell you all about the IGD employability programmes. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to find out a little bit more about the jobs available within the industry. Um, it's a very, very big industry. It's very fast growing as well. And there's lots of different opportunities for very talented people from um, marketing to sales, engineering, scientists. There's so many different job roles. And we're going to hear a little bit more from our industry professionals later on as well about their jobs. They're going to be joining us a little bit later on. So again, any questions whilst our professionals are talking, if you want to pop them in the chat box, then I will do my best to read them out. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about the virtual work experience event as well from the 23rd to the 27th of May. And within that, what we're going to do is a workshop very similar to that. Um, I'm just going to pop in the chat box here. This is a link, so you can do this at any point throughout the session. This is just a link to register for our IGD uh, work experience week there as well. So I'll leave those details there and we will pop them in a bit later as well. Um, but the work experience week is a series of online events, as I said, very similar to this. And each day we have a different theme across the food and grocery industry. Uh, we're joined by loads of amazing and interesting experts. We have quizzes and activities for you to take part in. And then we also have a project that you can get involved with as well. Um, but I'm going to say let's hold on to that thought and we'll come back to that a little bit later on because um, we've got so much to get through today. But the most important part is meeting our industry experts. So we've got them here with us now. Um, so I'm going to put them on the spot first thing um, and I'm going to come over to you each individually and we're going to find out about your interesting job roles, what you do and um, tell us your name as well because we haven't got your names appearing on the screen. If you could do a quick introduction of who you are, what your job role is, where you work and then I think it would be nice to hear your favourite part of your job um, as well. Uh, so if I can go over to Gemma first, please, we'll start with you, thanks. I had to be the first one. <laughs> Well, afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Gemma Hewitt. I'm the HR business partner for Greencore. Um, Greencore are a food manufacturer and we supply products to some of the large um, retailers that you might find um, in the supermarkets and other smaller um, organisations. Um, in terms of my role, um, so I've worked in HR for, the, for my whole career um, and I've been with the business for about three years. Oh, we lost. Now. Prior sorry, to that, she was. Sorry, we lost you for a second there. Did you say how, how many years did you say you've been in the industry? Um, three years. I've been with Greencore for three years. 
Um, and prior to that, I worked for transport in the transport sector. So making the move into food um, was exciting, challenging, but also now I'm in it, I absolutely love it. Um, so in terms of HR and what the role is of, of HR, we do everything from um, getting people into the business or so recruitment, onboarding, induction, all the way through to people leaving the business. But it's got some really, really good bits in the middle um, all around engagement, people focus areas, L&D, um, which is learning and development. Uh, we also look at compliance training as well within the within the sector because we have to make sure that we are compliant from a health and safety and food safety perspective. Um, I'm consciously said two minutes. I don't think I'm going to get there. <laughs> <laughs> In terms of the favourite part and what I enjoy most um, about working for Green Court and for our site in concert is the people and that is one of the main reasons why I got into HR in the first place is so that I can interact and build those relationships with with all of the people who work on site. Um, we've got about 250 colleagues who work at this site um, that I'm responsible for but there are over 13,000 colleagues across Green Court in total and that spans roles from um, MPD which is product development through to factory floor operations, engineering, um, and all the support functions that come with it, whether it's commercial, finance, we cover a spectrum of roles, even though you might just assume that it's just food manufacturing. Amazing. Thank you so much. And I know we already have questions coming in, but I'm going to wait and we're going to find out a little bit more about our other volunteers as well. Okay. Um, so if we can go over to Dippin next, please. Sure. Uh, thank you very much. Hi, my name is Dippin Ladd. I am a, uh, an associate scientist at PepsiCo. Uh, for those of you who may not have heard of PepsiCo, you will definitely have heard of Pepsi um, in amongst uh, some other products such as Walker's Crisps. Um, so we very much manufacture beverages, which, uh, as I said, Pepsi, uh, things like 7up, Tango, etc. And we also manufacture other um, softer drinks, uh, such as juices like Tropicana as well. Um, and then on the snack side, uh, as I said, we uh, manufacture Walker's Crisps, um, Doritos, uh, along with things like peanuts as well. And uh, one of our bigger brands is also Quaker Oats. Um, one of my roles is to actually work in the lab and uh, my team conduct a varied uh, level of testing. Uh, I am in the very lucky position of actually moving away from that and um, conducting my own research. So I personally get to work with people who have uh, various issues that they may have seen, uh, whether that's a change in some of the flavors that they're working on or uh, an issue that they find as they are processing some of the foods. And uh, they come to me and I get the lucky position of trying to figure out what the issue might be. And this can go from small things such as uh, a slight flavor change because um, the product is having to stay within a certain shelf life or within a best before date, all the way through to something that's a bit more complex and looking at the, the flavor chemistry or even just the different chemistries that take place as you um, fry or roast or even bake um, certain products. Um, I guess the the one thing that I love about my job is uh, learning something new every day that can be based on different people that I work with or even the new, newer challenges that come across um, from day to day. So that's a little bit about me. Excellent. Thank you. And just to let you know, I had my Quaker Oats this morning. Perfect. <laughs> Um, lovely. OK, um, Joshua, um, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself, your job role and the favourite thing about your job, please. Sure. So, yeah, I'm Josh. Um, I work for, well, I'm employed by Mondelez International. So those who may have not heard the company definitely heard of the brands. So we own Cadbury, Toblerone, Milka, Philadelphia, uh, to name but a few. So massive um, super brands in the world of FMCG. The 
unique thing about my role um, at Mondelez is that day to day I actually work for Tesco. So I'm at I'm a Tesco category planning manager. So also known as a category implant within Tesco. So even though Mondelez pay my wages day to day, I sit in the Tesco office. I sit in all the Tesco meetings. So my role as a category planning manager is to work with the buyers um, for confectionery um, at Tesco to basically maximize the amount of sales that Tesco can achieve in the confectionery category, whilst also making sure other key metrics that, that Tesco have um, are met. Um, so I work across um, all suppliers. So I work with Mondelez, I work with uh, Lint, Ferrero, um, all the kind of main companies, but also a lot of the smaller companies as well. So it's quite a unique role to see, see um, how each company um, works. Um, but I also um, work with PepsiCo um, and other, um, other other suppliers who work in the impulse category, which covers soft drinks, confectionery, biscuits, crisps, wide, wide range of products um, to do exactly the same thing as well. Um, I'd say the most thing that I like about my role the most um, is probably working on something new day to day slash week to week. So um, what I'm working on these next two days, very different to the two days after. Um, and you never feel kind of that you're getting stuck down into one project too much. You've always got a lot of plates spinning, uh, so to say. So that's probably, um, yeah, my most enjoyable thing, I think. Brilliant. Thank you. So we'll, we'll call you the chocolate man from now on, making all of those delicious <laughs> confectionaries as well. Um, OK, we have got some questions coming in. So the first question that I'm going to ask um, is um, and let's let's start with Gemma for this one, because we started with your introduction. Uh, what made you choose a career in uh, the food industry? Well, that's a good question. Um, so after spending 15 years in the transport sector at the time, for me, it was time for a change. And I wanted to gain a bit of exposure into a um, bigger organisation as well. So for me, it was around career progression. And I think it's important when you're looking for your next move or you're starting out in your career that you have something that fits with your vision and your values for your career as well. So for the Green Corps for me was about how they developed their people, how they engaged with their people, because part of our ethos is people at the core and it's the, at the heart of everything that we do. So it's making sure that wherever you look, it is aligned to what your, your beliefs are and how you want to move forward and move ahead. Excellent. Thank you. And you, you said that in your introduction as well, how important it was that the people that you work you work with so that's obviously a really important ethos within the company um okay let's ask the same question then over to Dippen. why did you yeah. choose a career in the food industry how did you how did you kind of get into this industry uh a brilliant question if i'm honest i'm not sure whether the food industry picked me or whether i picked the food industry if i'm honest but um it very much came down to influence of other people i happen to come from a family who worked for pepsico um, and whilst I was talking to them, I ended up having an opportunity to work there. Uh, and it was very much a temporary uh, occasion. I wasn't expecting to stay for such a long time. But just going back to what Gemma just said uh, around uh, having that career path and understanding what you want to do next in, I guess, in your life. The PepsiCo gave that option and those opportunities. Uh, and. I ended up enjoying the varied, uh, I guess, roles and uh, responsibilities that came within PepsiCo. And it very much kind of opened my eyes to, oh, actually, I didn't know that you could do um, job X or role Y. And um, as a result, I've kind of moved um, along the way and at the same time learned different things that I would not normally uh, be exposed to such as things such as sales or marketing all the way through to regulations and legal aspects um, that affect the food industry in itself. Excellent, thank you so much. So much information to take in. I, I just don't know how we can fit it all in within within the hour. Um, I have another question here, and this one is um, specifically for Josh. Um, somebody's asked here about working in Tesco. Do you get to meet lots of other people from other areas of the business and work with them too? 
Sure. Um, so it's a great question. Yes, I do. Um, so you work with a lot of different teams. So whether it's my immediate buying team, um, but also the teams in soft drinks, the teams in crisp, the teams in biscuits, um, but also we work with marketing, we work with finance. Um, so it's a similar sort of dip and said you, you realize that there's a vast amount of roles available um, and you get to work with a vast amount of people within those roles. So, um, yeah, you definitely meet. It's obviously a massive retailer. So um, that comes with uh, with working for such a, a big retailer, I guess. Excellent. Thank you. OK, we're going to hold the questions for now and we're going to come back to those. Um, but you'll see on the screen there, I'm just going to show you the supply chain. So thinking about the supply chain there, we've heard a little bit about some really varied and interesting jobs. Um, and it's not just jobs that we see as customers when we walk into a shop on the shop floor. There are lots of different skills and jobs right across the industry. So starting from the very beginning, so the raw materials, whether that is food or materials, obviously in gross stores they sell clothes and things as well so starting from the raw materials you've got to think about the people that are looking at the quality perhaps coming up with recipes then we get to the suppliers and um, the manufacturers there's so many different processes in terms of scientists engineers IT specialists to help produce these products and then once the products are made they need to be distributed as well um, and then taken to the correct retail locations then the shops have buyers the buyers have to decide on the pricing there are project managers sales managers accountants so many jobs within this industry so looking at this supply chain everybody watching what I want you to do is just to pop into the chat box where do you think our industry experts jobs lie within that supply chain so have a little bit of a think where do you think do you think it's one particular point or do you think perhaps that um, actually it's broader than that and their job role can be within the whole of the supply chain or maybe a couple of areas um, I'm just going to wait and see if any ideas come in there and as we are waiting and as we're having a look uh, so Dan has said all I think yeah okay excellent and if you can pop in okay so supplier if very broad customer based roles okay let's go over to our industry experts and ask them now um, so let's start with Josh on this one Josh where does your role sit within here is it easy to kind of to be able to pinpoint it for you? Yeah, so it's definitely in the retail location, um, but it goes to the point that Dan said, in terms of where it sits, it's definitely retail location, but we work with most of the people involved in that, um, in the whole thing, so, um, but yeah, retail location. Excellent, thank you. Um, and over to Dippin. Um, I would probably say in between supplier and manufacturing because I work in research and development, um, but my role is definitely not limited to those two areas. Um, I'm actually probably touch every single point um, across these levels. Um, so, yeah, I, I would definitely say in between supplier and manufacturing, but not limited to that. Excellent. OK. And lots of people have put that in the chat box as well. And again, said across all the areas. Um, and now let's have a think about Gemma. Where do we think Gemma's role sits within the supply chain there? And Gemma, can you reveal to us, please, where you sit? <laughs> yeah, so we would definitely firmly be in the manufacturing part of the circle. We actually produce the product from the raw material that is supplied to us and then we distribute to um, the customers so they can then put it into retail. Fantastic, thank you. Um, okay, that is something that we could go into for a lot longer, but actually if you come back to our work experience week, we'll have more experts as well and more of an insight into how that supply chain works. So we're gonna move on now. Um, and if you just have a little look, this is just an example of lots of the very variable, which is hard to say, very variable roles um, that some of our industry experts took part in in our work experience week in February. Um, if you're able to see the screen, I'm actually just going to make my screen a bit bigger there so that I can see. Um, we have a variety of different people, lots of different companies as well, lots of different job roles there. Um, so just pop into the chat box out of all of these job roles and people that you can see on the screen, who would you be most interested in wanting to hear a little bit more about their role? Um, and I'm gonna come over to our experts now as well, just to find out from you, 
obviously you know a lot about your industry and your roles um but looking at the various different companies there or any roles that perhaps you might not have seen before because there are sometimes some more obscure roles that we I, I know I've worked with quite a few people in um, IGD where I didn't even know that their role existed. I was amazed to hear there's some really kind of intricate and detailed roles that perhaps we don't think about. Um, but over to you to find out which one do you think is the most interesting? Um, and I'll start with Dippin, please. Who would you like to meet on, on the board there? Um, I would probably want to meet Mike Ward, um, who's part of the engineering day, the capital replacement manager. Sounds fairly interesting just even within that title, what exactly might be happening there. Nice. OK, thank you. Um, there's lots of people here saying they'd like to meet somebody from Nestle, Birdseye, Mondelez. There you go. You already have. So there you go. You can tick off that box. Uh, brand managers. Head of External Affairs, uh, Tommy said Pepsi, so that's PepsiCo, there you go. Um, lots of people saying Tesco as well, Gemma. Okay, so I'm gonna come over to Josh next. Um, who do you think you would like to hear from? I think coming from Mondelez, probably Martin. Um, I've certainly never heard of that job title within Mondelez, so it just shows you even though when you're part of an organization, you may not even know a role exists until um, something like this comes up. So. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Excellent. Um, I love the fact that you're staying true as well to the company. <laughs> I love that. Uh, loyalty. We like that. Um, Gemma, over to you. Who would you like to um, to find out more about? There's, there's a couple, actually. Um, probably first of all, I would like to meet Jess Alley, um, marketing manager at Birdseye, just because I'd like to understand more about creativity and how that marketing element links into how products get distributed and made aware of so the visibility piece um but then as well philippa page at tesco's just because engineering and the industry that it is it's really rare um get, becoming more normal but really rare to see um a, a female um in a, in a management role within engineering so i'd like to pick her brains a bit about how she got into the industry and what challenges she faces Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. And you know what? I think at the end, we'll have a bit more time to talk about the different routes uh, within the industry as well, because that's really important. But for now, this is another exciting bit. It is our quiz. This is one of my favourite bits. Um, so it's our quick fire quiz. Um, and in a second, what you'll see is a poll will appear on the screen. So I'm going to read out the questions for you. If you are a teacher in a classroom and you've got a large group, then make sure that you've got one person that's nominated. That could be the teacher or a student themselves to actually type in the answer. Um, and we'll have a look at your polls and we'll see which questions you're all voting for. And then I will reveal the answer. So here we go. So first question. How much do we spend on food and groceries in the UK? So this is per year. How much do we spend on food and groceries in the UK? Is it A, 212 billion? Is it B, 212 million? Is it C, 21.2 million? Or D, 21.2 billion? So we'll just wait a couple of moments um, if a poll arrives on your screen see can you see the poll now industry experts can you see the poll on the screen let's try this um can you see it now no no Oh, OK. It should be live, but that's OK, because we can talk about it. If we can't get it up on the screen, then how about just popping in the chat box? What do you think it is? Is it A, 212 billion, B, 212 million, C, 21.2 million or D, 21.2 billion? So have a little look. Um, and actually, I'm going to come over. I'm going to put our experts on the spot because that's what we do. Uh, lots of people saying A, actually. Um, Let's go over to Dippin. What do you think it is? How much do we spend a year on food and groceries in the UK? Oh, you have to go hard and you have to go big on this, don't you? I think definitely A. Um, I think the pandemic showed us how how much people love their food and how much they love uh, the different brands that are out there. Amazing. OK. All right. Let's have a little look then. 
yeah, 212 billion, which is a huge amount of money. Um, but yeah, like you said, we, we've got to think like there's so many different brands and everybody has to eat, don't they? Everybody does. So that's a huge, huge amount of money. And if we're thinking about that, thinking about the amount of job roles and people that then work within that industry as well is a massive, massive number. So well done to you. Um, if you got that correct, let's move on and have a little look. So this is when we're talking about the discounted share of the food industry, we're thinking about Aldi and Lidl. Um, and this has grown a lot recently. Uh, but these are the figures we have just for 2021. So think about what was going on in 2021. Think about how many people might have been shopping at Aldi and Lidl. Um, and let's have a look here. So what do you think the discounted share of the food industry in 2021 was? Was it A, 16.6%? B, 26.6%, C, 46.6%, or D, 13.1%. Um, and I'm going to come over to you, Josh. What do you think the answer is to this one? Everyone else, pop it in the chat box. Let's have a, let's have a chat about it. Definitely put me on the spot, but um, I would go for 13.1%, number D. 13.1%, okay, okay. Um, lots of people saying D, actually. Yeah, I think general consensus for this one is B or D. Okay, I'm going to reveal it. And the answer is yes, 13.1%. Well done. And a lot of people actually don't go to that number because I think there are so many Aldi and Lidl stores. But if we're thinking the actual question 2021, um, a lot of supermarkets, people are actually buying stuff online and, and you're not able to do that across um, Aldi and Lidl at the moment. So well done to everyone who got that correct as well. I'm really impressed. I'm hoping that it, Gemma, if you can get the, the next question, I think that might be a record that our industry experts have got them all right. So oh, across no pressure then. <laughs> oh, I'm crossing my fingers. OK, this one, this one is a difficult one, actually. Uh, <laughs> How many jobs are there in the UK food and grocery industry? Um, everyone else, you can answer this question as well. I love seeing your answers coming into the chat box. Um, is it A, 4.1 million, B, 3.9 million, C, 1.2 million, or D, 2 million? What do you think? Have a little look. Um, and Gemma, go on, you tell us, what are, what are your thoughts on this one? I think I'm going to go B, 3.9 million. Because if I think just within our organisation, there's 13,000, it's got to be bigger. It's got to be big. I definitely agree. It's, it's going to be a big number, isn't it? Um, let's have a look. So Charlotte saying C, Tommy saying B, Jack saying D, Ethan saying D. Let's have a look. It's 4.1 million. So close. You're so close. Uh, yeah, so 4.1 million jobs in the UK food and grocery industry. And that... Um, that's changing all the time and growing as well too. So it's a massive, vast industry with so many different jobs. I think it's um, I think it's something like one in six or one in seven people in the UK actually work within uh, the food and grocery industry, which is a really, really big number. Um, thank you for taking part in the quiz. I do love a quiz. It keeps us on our toes and also some really interesting facts there as well. Um, remember, if you do have any questions for our industry experts, just keep them coming into the chat box and I'll do my best. Um, to. I won't be able to answer all of them because there's so many already coming in, but we'll select some and ask them at the end as well. Um, so as you can see on the screen now, Everything is changing, which I keep saying, but um, in terms of developing technology and innovations as well, every industry, but particularly the food and grocery industry, are having to kind of update the way they work um, to suit the customers as well, depending on what people need, obviously. Online shopping has become a massive thing. Um, if you think about tills as well, when I was younger, you would just have a person at the till. You would never just have sort of a till that you go to uh, without anyone else being there as well. So thinking about how the digital world, technology and other innovations and even thinking about sustainability as well, all of the things that these huge global brands are doing uh, to improve and keep the hassle keep the customer happy as well. Um, so you can see on the screen there, we've got some images, we've got facial recognition, we've got drones delivering food, which I've never seen, but I would absolutely uh, love to see. 
we've got robots there as well um so many different things which are amazing using technology and thinking about the future so i'm going to come over to our experts now and i'm going to start with our scientists stiffen actually and um, can you tell us something innovative that you are working on at the moment please yeah sure so there's actually two areas uh one is automation as outlined in point number two we um some of of our work that we do is highly repetitive, very, very repetitive, and requires a high level of um, accuracy, uh, precision, etc. And so, what we have done is looked at a, a robot robotic system to help some of our analysts um, to do some of their jobs, um, but also give our analysts some more time to look at things such as data, or go speak to some of our partners. Um, and by doing that, we've got still the analysis that takes place in the background through the automation. And then we've got the more high uh, value add uh, areas where we're having face to face conversations and really uh, driving some of the analysis that we really need to knuckle down on. Fantastic. Thank you. I knew you'd have some some good answers for us there. Um, and Josh, have you got a in terms of your role or just within the sort of store um, in general? Um, is there anything that that you're working on at the moment or any sort of new technologies that are coming into play? Sure. So there's probably a couple of things. So first thing, the adoption of rapid delivery services. So where you've got the likes of gorillas um, or whoosh. Um, and making sure that actually the products within confectionery uh, are at the front of mind of shoppers when they're using those um, services. And then also um, you will see the likes of Amazon, um, Tesco have trialed it and also Sainsbury's around a um, tiller store. So you walk in and the technology um, on the shelves allows you to literally just pick a product off the shelf, it recognizes what product it is, it recognizes the price, it recognizes how many you've bought. Um, and then because you've linked your payment up, um, payment method up prior to actually walking in, you don't actually have to check out. Um, so again, it links into automation um, and convenience um, for the shopper. Brilliant, thank you. And I think we all kind of agree that um, time is so valuable to all of us now. So any way that we can kind of help people have more time and kind of set up this technology uh, to aid that, then as you say, it keeps the customers very happy, it gives them their time back to do other things. Uh, Gemma, any kind of innovative or new technology that, that you're using within Tesco? And green green calls. calls. Sorry, green calls. <laughs> right. um, so there's a couple of things to touch on. One is around innovation and automation, which I think is a, a theme throughout all of us. Uh, automation, so we have we have pick and place robots who take, um, who, <laughs> they're people. <laughs> um, they take the meals off the conveyor belt line and they pack them so that they're ready for distribution. So it's taken out a lot of the human aspect of the packing process um, and that's something that we look to do around innovation and creativity but at the same time we still want our people to be involved in that so we get a balance of both and the other thing I would just like to touch on is around sustainability so last year we trialed and have now successfully launched the first recyclable sandwich packaging um, so it means that everything that comes with a sandwich that you would purchase from a supermarket or from a petrol station, you can now recycle all of that rather than just the cardboard. So it's it's definitely an innovation that we're, we're proud of. Yeah, that's massive, that is, isn't it? Excellent, thank you so much. Okay, um, we're gonna move on now and have a little look at um, skills. So we've thought a little bit about your job roles, but what does it take to land a really good job? Um, and something that we spend a lot of time thinking about during work experience week is employability skills. So these are the skills listed that we know employers are looking for in all of their employees. And um, so let's just have a little look about which one which one do you think you're best at? And I'll start with, um, let's start with Dippin. Out of all of these skills, which do you think is your strongest at the moment? 
Oh, quite easily, it has to be analytical, um, simply for the fact that I work in that area. And so a lot of my time is spent maybe looking at detail, whether that is looking at samples, whether that's looking at data, or even having very deep dive conversations with people. Um, a lot of that requires analytical skills where you're drawing information from various sources and then trying to um, develop insights and conclusions based on those, based on that data that you have received. Excellent, thank you so much. Um, and Josh, what do you think is your top skill that you kind of use the most on a day-to-day -day basis in your role? Probably communication um, and teamwork. Um, like I said before, because I work with um, many different suppliers externally from Tesco, but also then many teams internally. Um, the only way to achieve anything within uh, the business is to be good at communication. Um, so it, it really is a key skill um, to make sure kind of you you get what you're able to achieve what you want. Excellent, thank you. Um, okay, we've lost Gemma, but I, I imagine she'll pop back in and we'll see her appear very shortly. Um, but we'll move on. And again, I just want to make sure that everyone else is kind of involved. So starting with entrepreneurial, what I'd like you to do is to rate yourself, those of you that are watching, um, and Dippin and Josh, you can do this as well, rate your scale rate yourself on a scale of one to five um, as to where you think you are in terms of that particular skill. So entrepreneurial skill, um, starting with one as perhaps not very good and then going up to five on the scale as being excellent. I'm the best at this. Um, so entrepreneurial. And, and when we say entrepreneurial, that doesn't that doesn't just mean someone that's setting up an own, their own business. It's about kind of thinking outside the box um, and taking the lead as well and perhaps thinking differently and, and uh, finding new innovative ways to work. So let's have a little look. Um, we've got quite a few people here. It's very varied, which it's going to be. We all, have, we all have different skills. This is the thing. Um, so we've got quite a few people saying, yeah, that that's something perhaps that they need to improve on. I can't see... I can see threes and I can see fours, but I can't see any fives for entrepreneur. Oh, yes, Warren. Warren has given us a number five. Thank you very much. And Mitch there as well. Excellent. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, and I'm just going to come over to you guys as well. Where would you put yourself in that scale of one to five for un entrepreneurial? Um, I'll start with Josh, please. I'd probably go three. Um, the reason being, I think, from a thinking outside the box perspective, I think I'm quite good. I think the difference is is where in in practical terms, um, it's almost the next step of taking that thinking outside the box forward mm. and actually implementing something which is easier said than done. When you're working for big companies, um, there's usually a lot of process. Um, and that obviously means that things do get slowed down. So when you are trying to do something a bit different, et cetera, it's not to say you can't do it, but it takes longer um, than maybe it would do in a smaller company. Um, and I think that's where sometimes you then maybe deprioritize it because you've got to prioritize other things. Um, so I think it's an area that probably the further, the more experience you get in your career, the more willing you're probably, more, the more willing you are to, to do that. Um, and you feel a little bit safer um, to do that as well. Excellent, thank you. Um, and Dippin, what about you? Um, in entrepreneurial skills, where would you rate yourself on a scale of one to five? Um, I'd probably go with what Josh just said, uh, a three. Uh, my, I guess my roles have never really uh, required so many entre entrepreneurial skills. However, uh, I guess over the last couple of years, that has really kind of come to the forefront and um, developing that out of the box thinking has really required me to understand what is currently out there. As I kind of mentioned earlier, uh, linking in with different people, um, not necessarily that work only within R&D or within my department, but different areas within the business that really try and pull things um, together and work as a team um, to develop unique solutions that are obviously not necessarily in play at the moment. Excellent, 
Excellent, thank you. Um, and I did have a message from Gemma to say that she had to go to a meeting. So she says, thank you so much. Um, Gemma will actually be joining us for the work experience in May. So hopefully if you have any questions for her, do make a note of them now and you'll be able to ask those questions in May as well. On the Friday, we actually do just concentrate on HR, but I'm gonna go through all of the different sessions with you um, towards the end as well. Um, let's just very quickly have a little look at teamwork here as well. So pop into the chat box, what would you rate yourself in terms of how good you are at teamwork? Uh, one being not that great, and then five being, yes, brilliant teamwork. Love working in teams, love getting stuff done, working with other people. Um, Sol has come straight in and given us a five, excellent. Leah's given us a four, very good. And Tish a three, there's lots of varied numbers here coming in as well. And again, remember, all these skills are, are things that you can develop. Someone has put a question in here saying, how do we go about developing these? Um, we will talk about that a little bit more um, when it comes to our work experience. We will um, get an insight from our experts on that too. Um, but I'm gonna move on now because we need to fit everything in. Um, I can see that you, you're already asking lots of questions, which is brilliant, so hopefully, you'll be thinking about signing up to the work experience week. So I did promise that we'd go through in a little bit more detail. So let's have a little bit more of a look in depth here. So um, it's from the 23rd to the 27th of May. And across the week, on the first day, on the Monday, you have an introduction to the industry. You'll be told a little bit about the project briefs as well. Uh, there's three different projects that you can get involved with across the week, um, where you'll be pitching an idea, doing some research, um, and these will all be marked and you'll get feedback on those as well. On Tuesday, we concentrate solely on sales and marketing. So we'll make sure that we have sales and marketing industry people there to answer your questions as well. Uh, on Wednesday, it's all about engineering. Um, so we'll be looking at um, the project itself. I'll go into a little bit more detail a bit later on as well, but we'll have some really interesting roles. Um, and again, throughout the sessions, just like you've done today, if you have any questions, then you can ask those specifically um, to the industry experts that you want to as well. On Thursday, we have IT and digital. Uh, which is a really interesting one. Um, and digital, especially at the moment, seems to be one of those skills that everyone wants to develop and everyone actually over lockdown um, and over the pandemic has kind of had to develop that skill as well. We're all kind of a lot more used to being online just as we are now uh, doing presentations online rather than being in the room as well and using various platforms. And then obviously we heard about the innovative ways that various companies um, are developing their technology as well to help customers. Um, and then Friday, I mentioned, was HR. So all about employability skills. Um, I can't remember who asked me, but somebody did ask about the, um, the actual skills and how you develop those. Um, and that would be the best session to come to, the Friday session to find out a little bit more about that too. Excellent. So the projects that I mentioned, um, they're actually really exciting. I, I get to present these as well and tell you a little bit more about these in depth. And, and I, they are really interesting. So I would recommend that you do take part in these projects if you can. You can choose all three or you can just do one of them. It's entirely up to you. Um, but the first product is all about sales and marketing. So on the Tuesday, you'll be concentrating on that and we'll tell you about the, the actual uh, project itself. And this one is Plantastic. If you have a little look on the screen, they're actually an existing brand that you might have heard of before. So your project for this is just really to come up with a new and exciting flavour. So thinking about your target audience, thinking about the design of your project as well. And then you do a five minute pitch um, and you actually record that and send that to us. Engineering is all about um, thinking about single use plastic, you know, the punnets that you get your fruit in, your strawberries, thinking about how you could engineer something um, that isn't single use plastic that you can sort of reuse. So thinking about the design and durability of that as well. Um, and then digital, the digital project 
it's entirely up to you. Again, it's thinking about kind of customer pain points. How can you improve the shopping experience? Uh, so in the past, people have thought about ways that you could provide entertainment on screen at a till point. That's just one example. I can't give you too many examples because hopefully you'll be joining us and coming up with your own projects as well. Uh, but it's up to you. You could do all three, sales and marketing, engineering and digital, or just pick one, but I promise you, any project that you do, you will be developing quite a few of those skills there that we just showed on the screen as well. So this is just a reminder of some of the roles, some of the people that you could potentially meet if you come and join us at the end of May. And now I'm gonna go over to our lovely volunteers for a piece of advice, and then we're gonna go through some questions. Um, so let's start with Josh. If you could give a words of wisdom to your younger self, um, what would you say in order to kind of boost those particular skills that you need to work on and, and get a position in this industry? I think keep an open mind as to what job roles you will be open to. The reason I say that is because I, I studied a science degree decided I didn't want to go into a laboratory based role um, but I wanted a commercial role and um, the food industry was never kind of on my radar um, and I I came across Mondelez at Careers Fair applied for their graduate scheme and got onto it um, for sales and marketing on that graduate scheme I did five roles over three years two of which were during the first during the first lockdown that we had um, and even though there's certain roles within those five that I enjoyed more than more than certain others. I definitely gained skills, developed skills, and learned actually what I do want to do in the future from those roles. So I don't think there's a case of a bad role. I think it's almost learning what you've gained from that role and then maybe learning what you do want to do more of or less of in future roles. Um, but also realizing that actually the skills and the network that you'll gain from working in different functions. So I've worked in sales, I've worked in marketing, I'm in category now, I've worked for a supplier with Mondelez, I've worked for Tesco. So over my five years in the industry, my network has grown and grown um, and that allows you to really pull different experiences. Excellent, thank you so much. Um, yeah, loads of brilliant advice there as well. And it's also really handy to know that you did a, a graduate scheme there too. Um, I'm just gonna pop the link in the chat again, whilst I remember, um, there you go. And let's hear from Dippin. So words of advice that you'd give to your younger self, um, for anyone watching now, what they can do to improve their skills and to try and secure a job in this industry. So when I graduated, I still didn't quite know what I wanted to do. Um, uh, and that seems to resonate amongst a lot of people. Um, if you're on this call, it is, I would say it is totally fine to not know what you want to do. Um, the one piece of, adv of advice I would give is just tr go ahead and try something. Um, you don't have to be good at it. You don't necessarily have to have experience of it. Um, if there's an opportunity, give it a go, see what happens. Um, even if you fail, at least you know that you've tried it and you may not necessarily want to come back to it. Knowing what you don't want to do is just as powerful as knowing what you do want to do in the future. Nice, thank you so much. Um, okay, this is so hard because we've got so many brilliant questions. So thank you so much for putting these questions into the box. Um, I'm gonna start with a, maybe like a trickier question um, and I'll, start with Josh. Um, this is from Nick and Nick has asked, what challenges do you face in your job? That's a great question. Um, there's a lot of challenges day to day. So when you're working um, on either when you're working for a supplier like Mondelez or you work for Tesco, um, when you're working on both sides, they have different strategies as businesses, they have different KPIs that they want to meet, etc. So what I want for Tesco, someone doesn't want for, for their own business. So working with other people in external companies to achieve something and working to overcome barriers on both sides. It's not just what works for Tesco, it's what works for the suppliers that we work with. So it's managing the amount of stakeholders that we have both internally 
at Tesco and externally. Um, like I said, the amount of different roles within Tesco um, that I've come across, and that means I have to work with them to achieve something, managing that, um, that amount of stakeholders to achieve something is really difficult. Um, and you do have to make sure that you engage everyone that you need to at the right point. Um, so I think that's probably um, that's probably the biggest challenge. I think also, um, I think prioritization, um, there's always more things to work on. There's always things that you do have to prioritize and say, actually, we'd really like to do this, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not going to make or break what we need to achieve and therefore I need to actually prioritize something else that is. So I think that's a skill that, again, as a graduate coming into the business, I found that really difficult. I think after a while you get to grips with actually what I need to prioritize. And then if I, if I have to deprioritize something else, that's absolutely fine. It's just managing the right people within who's, who's involved in that project. Um, so I think they're probably the, the two main ones. For me. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, that's really valuable, isn't it? Learning what to actually prioritize. Um, excellent. OK, thank you. Um, I'm going to I'm going to ask another tricky question um, and I'm going to go to Dippin for this one. Um, Lexi's asked, do you think um, there are bad sides of technology? Um, brilliant question that yeah, I've never really thought about that. I guess from where I sit, it it very much depends on how you use uh, the technology, If uh, depending on what it is. If it's overused sometimes, then it becomes uh, over-reliant. Um, I know that we have got um, some, some technologies which are siloed. Uh, what that means is that they work on their own. And therefore, when you do want to try and take some of the technologies and use it for something else, it can't be done because it has be become bespoke. It has been customized just for that need. Um, and so the newer technologies that are coming forward, such as low code solutions, they are very much uh, looking at not only being still being customized and still being um, bespoke, but how can you harmonize that such that it can address different areas at the same time? So just going back to the original question, um, it can be you know, technologies can have a bad side to it, but it's very much against how it is also used. Thank you so much. That, that was a tricky question and that was an excellent answer. So thank you. <laughs> excellent communication skills there and problem solving. Um, OK, I'm going to ask another question. A couple of people have asked this, actually, um, and I'm intrigued by this one again, because it's something uh, that has changed recently. Um, but do you, are you working remotely most of the time or are you in store or in an office? Where, whereabouts are you kind of based uh, for the most part at the moment? And, and I'll ask this to Josh first, please. Yeah, it's a great question. And it definitely has changed um, since COVID began. So um, at the moment, I'm in the Tesco head office once a week. Um, and the main reason for that is we have a team meeting every Wednesday. So it makes sense to come together as a team and have that face to face contact. Um, but also just to get to know other people within the office. I think when you are doing everything over Microsoft Teams, um, you know, you're going straight into a work meeting. You're talking about work. You're not actually getting to know that five minutes before the start of a meeting. You know, how is that person? You don't get to know anything about them. Um, so I think it's a great thing to, to start that face-to-face -face contact, but it still does vary. So last week, um, Tesco have a merchandising center, which is effectively a mock-up store um, where we test new concepts, et cetera, et cetera. So I was in the office on Wednesday, the merchandising center on Thursday, um, and then this week I'm just in the office on Wednesday. Um, so it does change week, week to week, but in general within the industry, the, I think there was a, a high level of flexibility prior to COVID and I think COVID has just actually accelerated that even further. Um, so it's more about trusting employees to, to, to do their job effectively rather than saying you need to be in the office, you know, two, three times a week. So uh, definitely more than work from home, more than, more than what we did before COVID, but um, it's a good mix um, to have kind of face-to-face but also um, still um, have the flexibility to work remotely. Excellent, thank you. Nice that you've got a balance of both. Um, and Dippin, same question to you. Are you uh, mainly working remotely? Yeah, very much echo what 
uh, Josh just said. So I actually am on site about two or three days a week. Um, this is to very much interact with uh, some of my team who are on site every day of the week, but also to, um, I, I work from home because I need to interact with my managers um, who are working remotely. So it, it varies from day to day, week to week, just dependent on the needs um, of that week. Excellent. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask one more question just before you go. Um, what is the proudest moment in your career so far? And I'm going to go back to Josh for this one first, please. It's a great question. And I got asked this in an interview coming off the grad scheme. So I'm trying, I was trying to think back to the answer that I um, gave at that point. But I think for me, it was um, when I was in my marketing uh, placement year on the grad scheme, I didn't have marketing experience. I didn't think it was going to be for me to be completely honest I thought I was more like sales orientated um but I think being involved in the launch of um a product called Fredo Treasures at the time which became the number one product launch in the FMCG industry during that year so I think we sold about 14 million pounds worth and being part of that whole uh, product launch from the product being um concepted um, and then working with all of the sales teams to actually bring it to life in store um, and then all of the marketing above the line campaign um, as well. So it's really be involved in um, a product launch from from kind of start to finish um, was was really good. And obviously to see the results that we delivered um, during that year. Um, so I think, again, I think keeping an open mind going into that placement probably helped me to achieve what we did. Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, and Dippin, uh, same question to you. Proudest moment in your career, please. Um, probably the, mo the proudest moment has to be when I had the opportunity to work in America for about six weeks. So this was a completely new opportunity, not knowing um, who the people were other than they are my colleagues in America and getting the opportunity not only to work with people on a professional front, but learning things about myself personally, about um, new ways of working, learning new skills, um, and even learning about new cultures and lifestyles. That was the most exciting part of uh, my experience. So yeah, definitely going to America for six weeks was my proudest moment. That is a very cool moment as well. Excellent. Uh, thank you so much. Um, anyone that would like to leave any comments, please do pop the comments in the chat box now and I will read them out. Um, but I want to say a huge thank you to our volunteers today, to Gemma as well, who will be joining us back again in May, um, but to Josh and Dippin there for giving some really, really insightful information and advice there as well. Hopefully everyone is feeling inspired and would like to join us in May. Um, you've got the link in the chat box there. You don't have to go to it now. You can save that for later. Um, I've had a question. Do you have to go to all of the sessions? No, you don't have to go to all of the sessions. Just let us know which days you can attend. Um, and if you're a teacher, um, your students might be able to attend the whole week or just work on their projects in the afternoons or just come to the sessions that suit them the most. You don't have to come to every single one. Um, we would suggest coming to the Monday because the Monday is an introduction as to how everything works. And you'll just get an idea of how it all flows as well um, and as I say you've got the choice of the three projects if I were you I'd try and do all three because if you've got the time it's going to help you develop those skills um, again it's up to you and um, we've got some lovely comments coming in here guys we've got Sol saying uh, this was really good I'm timing up now um, hopefully career map are going to send it to me yes career map uh, will be sending out an email after this session uh, as well Leo said, really helpful. Thank you so much. Sarah said, thank you, thank you. Thank you from Fern as well. Uh, thank you all from Naomi. Lots and lots of thank yous and lots of people that are going to be joining us, I can see here in May as well. Um, so yeah, let's have our virtual round of applause. Just imagine Josh and Dip and everyone's going, um, <laughs> But thank you so much. You've, um, you've been really interesting to talk to. And, and I do think that people have been inspired from what they've heard from you today as well. So a massive thank you. And thank you, Simon, as well, if you're still there in the background. Yeah. 
Yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, I hope everybody enjoyed the session. It was really, really good, really informative and engaging, which is fantastic. Um, I'll just end on a, a couple of points just to say that the session has been recorded. Uh, we'll put it on the careermap.co.uk website under the Career Map Live tab there, so you can go and have a look at any time, and also on the on-demand section of nationalworkexperiencework.co.uk. A um, couple more points just to say, Obviously, it's only just the start of National Work Experience Week, and we've got loads more interesting webinars coming up this week from the likes of uh, British Airways, Royal Mail, the Army, Seven Trent, etc. So, hope to see you again soon on any of those. Guys, would you like to leave any parting words before we go? Just any more thank words, you. Words, just a thank you from me. Um, I do attend some of these IGD sessions, um, so I really hope you have found it helpful. Um, and I would encourage you to take part in the work experience weeks. I have volunteered during them before, um, and you will definitely develop some skills um, from it that will help you um, go into this industry. Fantastic, thank you. And um, Dippin, any, anything else to add? Yeah, no, just thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak to everyone today. Some really good questions. Clearly, everyone's got engaged um, and uh, hopefully we might see one of one or two of you um, in face to face in real life at some point soon. Excellent. Thank you so much. And thank you all for watching. Um, and just like Dippin said as well, for taking part as well. We had some really, really good questions there today. And it was great to see that you were all there and enjoying it too. So massive thanks to everyone. And thank you, Simon. Good luck with the rest of the week. And hopefully we'll see you all again soon. Take care, everyone. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.